Okay, tell me about the story when you broke your ankle. <laughs> I'm sure you're in the picture. Say it again. I tell me about the time when you broke your ankle. Okay. Well, it was uh, 1972, and I was in RTC in college, and I had to go to my summer camp, which was uh, essentially basic training. But uh, I went there with a, a friend of mine that I was in the mission field with. We were both in ROTC, and we were going to the summer camp together. So we got up there, and we uh, went through a lot of training, and we went uh, one day out to what they called a scopes course. What that is is it's, a, it's an exercise where uh, one squad of people with rifles and packs and everything else uh, and camouflage helmets uh, go out and try and attack somebody who's dug in on a, on the top of a mountain. Are the exercises supposed to are they are are the exercises supposed to be dangerous? No, no, because you're not using real ammunition. You're just okay. using blanks. But the okay, reason. Okay, so you were just an exception. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the problem was, was we'd been out for three days in tents and it had been raining as it does at Fort Lewis, Washington a lot. So everybody was tired because we hadn't been able to sleep because of the rain and the wet. And it was just miserable. And so everyone was tired to start with. And we went to this course. And the reason they call it a scopes course is because you use a telescope. And on your helmet, it's camouflaged, but there are black numbers on it. So as you're trying to fight the bad guys to make it more realistic, you if you can see the number on their helmet, you shoot a blank at them and tell your radio operator who calls their radio operator and tells them you're dead. Oh, okay. Fun, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we were doing that, and the exercise was we were supposed to, as we were approaching the hill, we were supposed to run 10 yards, dive 10 yards, and roll to the side, one side or the other 10 yards, so we don't come up where we went down, because if they saw our number and shot us, we'd be dead. So we were doing that, and, and of course there were a lot of fallen trees because of the, of the wetness, and that's just the way it is in Fort Lewis, Washington, too. There are a lot, of, a lot of small trees that fall over. Well, I looked ahead. I was laying on the ground on my back, and I looked ahead to see what I had in front of me, and there was a pile of trees, and, and uh, I figured that I could jump over it. So I jumped up, I ran, and I tried to leap over it, and I guess because I was tired, my left heel hit the top tree, which threw me off balance, and as a result, I had to put my foot down sooner than I had anticipated, and so I put my, uh, I think it, no, that was my computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did it stop? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I uh, put my foot down sooner, and I put it down between two logs. So you can imagine, I'm flying through the air, my foot's down between two logs, not a good thing. Uh, so I tried to spin around and yank my foot out. And I succeeded in having one log in front of my ankle, on top of my foot, and one behind my ankle, behind my, my foot. And I just wrapped my ankle around the log and just went <laughs> And it was loud enough that one of my squad members almost passed out. And uh, he hurt because he heard it break. Yeah. It was not very nice. Anyway, here I am. They stopped the exercise. They, they actually had medics from the, the, the base there. They came and looked at my ankle and this guy said, well, I just got back from Vietnam because this was in the Vietnam era. He says, I know what to do. And he, so he pulled out this pneumatic splint, which is like a, a beach ball kind of blow up thing, but it's designed to fit around your leg and immobilize it. So he blew it up and put it on my leg after they cut my boot off and everything. And uh, they uh, punctured it with a stick. So it went, Psst. So that didn't work. So they ended up doing the Boy Scout thing. Got a couple of sticks, and one of the guys took his T-shirt off, and they tore it up in strips, and they tied my leg up with the two sticks. In any event, uh, they had told us in case there were any dangers, because one of the other exercises was real bullets firing. Mm -hmm. If there were any problems, they had a helicopter to evacuate us back to the hospital. Well, I thought, well, 
I'll, I'll be taken back to the hospital. But no, I wasn't serious enough to be taken in the helicopter. So they put me in what they call a gamma goat. And what it is is it's a machine that has the tractor in the front and it has the trailer in the back. And it pivots like this with two wheels up here and two wheels back here. And they put me in the back and we drove over the hills and dales and bouncing and everything and it was killing me. And I told the medic, he says, can you give me anything for the pain? And he says, nope, we're not authorized to do that. Aww. So it was pretty bad. And uh, I got back, got to the hospital. They took me into the room and, and the doctor took one look at me and he says, uh, okay, give him the, uh, the pre-op shots. We'll see what we can do here. So they gave me the, the painkillers and the nurse put a piece of adhesive tape across my forehead and wrote on it what they had given me. And when the doctor came in and saw that, he started laughing because he says, that's what they do in the field hospitals in Vietnam. She must have just come back from Vietnam and did it out of habit. <laughs> so I had this piece of tape, and he grabs the tape and goes, Whoop! which really felt great, as you can wow. imagine. Anyway, I'm there, and my ankle is still killing me because the painkiller hasn't taken place yet. The doctor comes in, okay, let's see what we can do about this. And I just happened to notice at that moment there was a a sign over the door to the room he had me in on the on the prep table and and the sign was blood red color and it said in white lettering famous last words it won't hurt a bit I knew I was in trouble well they slid me down so that my knees hung down at the end of the bed mm -hmm. and they had two two uh, uh, guys hold my arms and the doctor got down there and put his hands around my ankle and pulled it out straight. And it felt like somebody just had taken an axe and just whacked my leg off right below the knee. And I, like, and I yelled like crazy. They pulled it. They pulled it out straight. Like, I haven't, like... They just, he just pulled down hard on it. Did it, like, get disjointed? Because that's kind of what it sounds like. No, it didn't disjoint. It, oh, okay. Because all the ligaments still held it together. It just hurt the worst pain, I gotta say, it's just about the worst pain that I could ever imagine. And I nearly passed out. And he says, well, okay, let's put the, put the cast on. So they started wet wrapping my leg with warm plaster and so on. And I, that began to feel good because one, it was warm. And two, the pain pill, pain shot was finally taking effect. And so my story went on from there. And there's a lot more that happened to me, but as, as a result, pulling it out straight was not good enough because I had five breaks in it and they had to, actually had to go in and operate and screw it all together. So I have, I have five screws in my left ankle as a result. And so, to this day, that, it ended my military career too. And uh, I already had my first assignment back in Germany where I had been for two years as a missionary and I had been excited to go, but well, it wasn't to be. Looking back on it, would you change anything? No, because uh, as a result of, of that and the recovery time and so on, I, it took me an extra year to finish college, and that was the year I met my wife. And had I finished on time and gone, I would never have met her, because she wouldn't have been in college yet. So, so there you go. That's the moral of the story. So every time, every time my ankle aches when the weather changes, or I turn it a little bit because I don't have a lot of lateral strength, and it hurts me, I think, of what I would have missed had that not happened. I wouldn't have my children, and I wouldn't have a home that my niece could live in, and a lot of things would be different, so I don't regret it. Cool. End. <laughs> uh. She's it again.